<laughs> Hello everyone, and welcome back down here to the Gamer's Den with me, your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. I am, of course, still hunkered down here at home, and recording once again in the daylight, it is strange times upon us all indeed. But... We are here today to continue on with the Alchemist Build Guide, and since we have now completed all the extracts, we are going to take a look at what gear our Alchemist is going to use, specifically focusing on our Bomb Throwing Guide. Gearing out and kitting up this particular Junkrat style build, well, it's easy enough, but let's go ahead and just start diving right into it, shall we? Now, the first thing you're going to want to get is a bandolier. It's a mundane item, nothing really special about it, though you could get them enchanted, or at least I would argue you could. You can get a Mastercraft version of one and get it tooled up properly, and uh, you could definitely see about getting some enchantments thrown on it. But this will store up to small light items such as flasks and daggers and you can wear two bandoliers without any penalty otherwise they just start binding you up and restricting your movement and really just not being effective you re you use the retrieve stored item as a move action that in this case does not provoke an attack of opportunity pair these with the iron or reinforced flasks for things that you don't want to be breaking like uh, different potions or flasks and stuff that you might have well flasks yeah your extracts that you might have handy on the bandolier and you're going to have a very very handy non-magic item and you can find this in the ultimate equipment guide page 56 or go to the uh, go to the pathfinder system Re reference document online but there's one particular magic item especially that is going to be incredibly useful for you and that is the poisoner's gloves each glove can be filled with a liquid that isn't harmful to it Acid will be out, for example. But poisons, extracts, potions, etc., etc., those are all good to go for this. You can reuse potions regularly using your different extracts, so, you know, it's less of a concern there. What you're going to want in here are your extracts. This meshes real nice with your infusions discovery and will let you start applying these really rapidly to your allies and, well, Maybe you don't need to worry about yourself so much, but because you can just touch your target and, and uh, deploy the extract to them and it'll absorb, uh, the magic of the glove will cause it to absorb to them and uh, yeah, it will kick in, it'll speed up the rate at which you can put out these uh, different buffs and effects for your allies. Really, really, really good to have. Also, if you're in a position of stealth and maybe you've had some time to prepare and plan, load up some pretty deadly doses of poison or effective poisons like drow poison, which causes really deep sleeping effects that will last for hours, then you know you can start quietly knocking out guards rather quickly. Incredibly useful to have. And also, since with this particular build we are definitely needing to focus on upping our intelligence scores, Headbands of Intellect. This should be a no-brainer why you would want to get this one. It's incredibly useful for you. Boosting your intelligence will up your damage and give you more bombs, which will lead to more damage therein. If you can snag one that is going to boost your wisdom as well, even better. Your will saves are going to be relic pretty terrible, so any little boost to that is definitely a handy thing to have. But probably one of the most useful items that no alchemist build should be found without, especially our bomb throwing guide here, is the hybridization funnel. What's this do, you ask? Well, if you haven't been reading and have just been waiting for me to spell it out for you, you mix two splash weapons into a single flask. Uh, you alchemist in holy f water, fit them into a vial by taking 10 minutes and making a DC 25 craft alchemy check. Holy water and unholy water, you can do it, but it does increase the difficulty by 30. But you hit that, you now have holy and unholy water fused into one flask that you can throw at a target. What you need to be hitting that requires both holy and unholy water, I have no idea, and best of luck to you, Godspeed, my friend. But this is an incredibly useful item and gets you much more mileage out of so many different items. Mixing Tanglefoot bags with Alchemist Fire or Acid or or uh, any kind of that, uh, oh gosh, all any number of different splash weapons. I mean, hell, there's lots of homebrewed and custom, like, 
player done up or DM done up splash weapons that could easily apply to this. So go wild, have fun, play around. And of course, this gives you more reason to make sure that you have your craft alchemy score boosted up there because this will get you that extra bit of mileage out of it to make the skill even more worthwhile for you. But of course, there's plenty more gear to select where that came from. And following in that particular vein, we have the Boro Bead. Think kind of like the Pearls of Power that we covered in the Witch's Guide, but this will apply to your extracts. Basically, you use one of these and you will refresh a used extract slot as though you had not used it before. And it will be specifically for an extract that you had prepared. You can't just slot in something brand new, but you will get more use out of well, what I assume would already be useful extracts that you had in place, like haste or greater invisibility or flying, any number of things. And these beads exist for each spell level, well, extract level in this case, first through sixth. So definitely want to grab these. These will be huge game changers for you and definitely major lifesavers. But we still have other mundane pieces of equipment to talk about here, or at least something that'll start off that way, and that's your armor, specifically your chain shirt. The chain shirt is going to be one of the best light armor options, and you're going to want to get one made out of mithril as soon as you can, because uh, as far as I understand it, every interpretation of the rule that I've read, you can sleep comfortably in a mithril chain shirt with no penalties to waking up a bit more tired than normal, anything like that, because it's just that damned light. I mean, having armor made out of mithril already will take the armor to one weight category lighter. So heavy armor will be medium armor. Medium armor will count as, as light armor. So light armor, especially something like a chain shirt, just being made even lighter, it's got to be damn near like wearing cloth and you'll be wearing cloth underneath of it anyways because that's how armor works sorry i could get into that a little too much what with my history background but magic of course will make everything better ghost touch in particular comes to mind for your insubstantial variety of opponents it's just really really good to have uh, if you're not facing a lot of undead or incorporeal opponents then you know maybe you can skip that one go for something else uh, like the fortification effect to help give you a chance to shrug off some of the critical hits that you might be taking but you know just go with what is set to the particulars of the campaign you're playing in and you'll do just fine with this also we have the buckler which you will keep your hands free just having it strapped to your arm you get a plus one bonus to your armor class if you get a darkwood buckler it will be, of course be lighter than normal and as always get it enchanted as you're able to uh, what enchantments are going to be most useful again just depends on what exactly it is you're facing down but um, there's plenty of useful options out there and really even if you pick up, say, you get some random loot and it's a Darkwood Buckler that has a random enchantment on it, maybe that enchantment won't be useful all the time, but hey, it's a free enchantment, free magic shield, take it, run with it. And keeping on with our mundane equipment that's going to be really useful for you, especially since we're a more skill and gear-oriented kind of character class as opposed to the Witch, we have the Spring-Loaded Wrist Sheath. You get an item at hand as a swift action by using this. And uh, it's a, basically a hand device. It's exactly what you're thinking of. Mounts to the arm. You can have a dagger, a wand, or it also lists like five arrows or five crossbow bolts. I mean, I'm not sure how five arrows would fit on a normal human-sized forearm. But, hey, it's what the rules say you can pull off with and we are going with more of a rules as written maximized optimized build guide sort of thing well maybe not maximized but you get the idea so you can have a poison dagger here ready to go and hurl it with impunity as a swift action not having to worry about drawing it not needing to have to worry about having quick draw or anything like that this will be a very very useful item and then, of course, we have the different weapon blanches. So 
Each of these is situational and kind of dependent, again, on what it is you're facing. But it's so much less offense, uh, expensive than trying to have the different enchantments or specific materials in place to get your weapons to count as silver, cold iron, ghost salt, or having adamantine effects applied to them temporarily. This helps a lot with overcoming specific damage reductions, especially if, say, you know, you've got a magic dagger for turning, say it's a plus two weapon over... Uh, overall, but the creature you're throwing it at, it requires a magic weapon to hurt it, but it also needs to be silver. Well, apply the weapon blanch to it uh, for silver, and it will now count as a silver weapon. You can throw it, have it return to you, bam, you've got your weapon back, and you can uh, blanch it some more and keep that effectiveness going. Although, you're probably going to be using your bombs just to, you know, if it's that kind of a creature, you're going to want different kinds of dispelling effects and maybe force caging it to keep it in place, but eh, you get the idea. Other items that are going to be handy for you, and these a lot of these are going to be handy regardless of the class. This is something, these are things that will be useful to all character classes regardless of build or differences and what they're supposed to be doing on the battlefield. Things like the Handy Haversack, which will let you draw an item as a free action because whatever item you reach for is going to always be on top and within easy grabbing position. Then you have Rings of Protection, which are going to boost your defense, and because they count as a force effect or a miscellaneous armor bonus, they are going to apply to your regular armor class, your flat-footed, and your touch armor class, which is huge, absolutely useful. Even if you only get something like a plus two bonus there, having that plus two bonus apply across the board is incredibly useful and will do a lot to help keep you alive. In a similar vein there, we have the Cloak of Resistance, which will boost all of your save scores. Now, uh, your Fortitude and your uh, reflex saves, they're not all that bad. You know, pretty solid, pretty good. But your will save definitely needs a boost, and it doesn't hurt that your other two good saving throws will be boosted by having this cloak as well. And then, of course, Wand of Cure Light Wounds. You can make use of it, but even if you're not in a position where you're able to, you're throwing bombs constantly, or you're moving about, you're positioning yourself, how, whatever it is you might be doing, toss this wand over to the cleric or to the druid or to the bard or whoever and they will be able to start healing a lot of the party especially after a fight and really it's an inexpensive item and is will get you the maximum value for your coin in terms of the amount of healing it's going to provide so definitely have one on hand even if you aren't the primary healer even if you don't plan on doing any healing just helping out your teammates and making sure that they don't uh, have to keep expending all their resources or feel like they're the ones, uh, the only ones expending all their resources trying to keep the party alive will go a long way in helping keep, well, the party alive and together and hopefully minimizing some of that infighting. But RP being what it is, who can really say what exactly is going to happen? And certainly there are more magic items out there that are useful. There are so many different belts, like the like the blink back belt. Definitely good if you're going to be focusing on a lot of knife throwing. But even if you're not doing knife throwing, it's useful just to help keep yourself uh, mobile, out of range, out of reach. Very, very useful. Um, and of course, the, the different arrays of potions out there. And there's certainly plenty of other wands and scrolls that are useful, but those can be in some cases incidental to campaigns but if you don't have armor for some reason a scroll of mage armor never really hurt anybody and again it's one of those things supplying different buff effects or healing effects to help out with the party can be incredibly useful hi little one i am joined by my co-host my most adorable co-host nora journeyman storyteller and seventh circle initiate to the different mysteries and lores we contain here in Say hello to everybody, Nora. Can you say hi? Hi, Steve. Aw, oh, that's awesome. I love you, little one. But with that said, now that this little munchkin has escaped, I'm going to have to go tend to her. So, thank you all so much for your time. Ah, she's bringing about more familiars and homunculi. This one is a, in particular is a chocobo of the white magic variety. Yes, that is a quack quack. 
Can you give the can you give the chocobo a hug? Oh, that's so cute. If you've been enjoying today's videos, maybe consider popping around yeah, over here yeah. somewhere to view more content that I've been that I've been producing, bringing about to you. My goodness, my flow and rhythm has been all thrown off now. Yes. But with that said, I've been your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. You all have yourselves a good time and good night. Bye.